What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. So as we know, the Portland Trail Blazers entered tank mode a couple weeks ago when they shut down Damian Lillard, and it has honestly been the shade and sharp show as he's been absolutely amazing. So in today's Trail Blazers rebuild, I want to go ahead and trade away everyone in shade and sharp's way because as we see him as a number one option is going to lead to some good things. So today I'm trading Dame, I'm trading Anthony so I can unleash shade and sharp. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciated. So I literally did this video with the Minnesota Timberwolves yesterday where I traded away Cat in order to unleash Anthony Edwards a little bit more. So today, we're doing that same thing with Shaden Sharp. So of course, Shaden Sharp has been kind of given that number one role as of late because of course, Dame, Jeremy Grant, everyone is just kind of sitting right now. So if you look at his stats the last however many games, he's been pretty damn good been pretty damn good so i feel like shaden sharp is gonna be really good for the future i really hope portland finds a way to keep him uh in this offseason i really don't know what to expect this offseason i assume dame is gonna be here but it wouldn't surprise me at all if something went south but we've been saying this for years right like dame he's been here and i don't know if he'll be traded or not we'll see right so there's really nothing i could do it's out of my control if he were to be traded so what's the point of stressing out about it so we're just going to go ahead and celebrate the rest of the season with the way things are going right now. Of course, the biggest step is going to be starting that draft lottery process, and then we'll go from there. But I plan on trading both Dame and Anthony to give Shane Sharp that full-on scoring role. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to choose overs or unders on your favorite players that you enjoy watching each and every day. It is available on mobile or desktop, and this is how it looks. They give you the number, and you're going to choose over or under on it. They pretty much have every sport you can imagine, whether it's soccer, NFL, NHL. They have a ton of different options, so this is how it works. You choose between two to six players, two being three times your money, all the way up to six players, 25 times your money. Price Picks has just elevated my watching experience to a whole new level. So if you want to sign up, I also have some of my entries as examples here. That way you can kind of see how it works. But if you want to sign up, links in the description. Use code CRUSHABLES. They match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Thank you, Price Picks, for sponsoring today's video. So the Miami Heat actually ended up being the Sacramento Kings in the NBA Finals. So definitely an interesting finals to say the least as Miami went from the AFC to winning a championship. So shout out to them. So that means they came out of the playing tournament. Uh, they got LeBron James retiring, uh, so he's been retiring as of late, and then Kyle Lowry retires. I don't think he'd retire either, so I'm just going to override both of those, but draft lottery process, like I said, is where we're going to start this video, of course. It's going, or this offseason, I should say, because we already started the video, but lottery process is going to play a big factor in how this goes, because right now, we are projected the fifth best odds. The Blazers have tanked their way to the fifth best odds, so 10.5% chance at Victor Webanyama. So let's see if we can get lucky here. Number 14, you're going to have the Houston Rockets. They're going to stick at 14. That's going to be via the Clippers. So Clippers pick ends up being number 14 for the Rockets. Number 13, you're going to have the Toronto Raptors. So the Raptors also in the lottery. 12, you got the Oklahoma City Thunder. I assume this also... Actually, no, it's going to be the Thunder's pick. So they fell out of the lottery. Uh, so they're at pick 12. The Knicks at a number 11, uh, which is going to be there. Okay, so the Knicks actually fell out of the playoffs. Oh, no, that's a Dallas pick. My bad, my bad. So we're going to have that Knicks pick as well still. So I was about to say, if the Knicks are in the uh, lottery, which means we don't get their pick. And then uh, Chicago's pick's going to be 10. The Jazz pick number nine. Let's see if this keeps going well. So, so far, no surprises. We're on a good path so far. Number eight, Washington. Please don't jump up. Just stick at eight. And we are going to have them stay at eight. So far, so good. As long as these next two selections don't jump up, we should be good. Seven, Orlando. Stick and you got Orlando seven. Okay, we're in the top six, ladies and gentlemen. Number six, Indiana. Please stick that way. Please stay Indiana. Please stay Indiana. Let's Spurs. Okay, we have a top five pick. Not the worst thing in the world. Actually, it looks like we jumped up because this is predicting the Rockets. Okay, we have a top four pick. This is exactly how we'd want things to go. If we could get the top three, I'd feel really good about that. Uh, it's going to be four. Damn, on the cusp of four. Pick number four. That sucks. So we get fourth overall. Pistons, Pacers, Hornets, and then us. So, unfortunately, we're not in the realm of either drafting a Webanyama, 
I don't think I would have drafted Scoot Henderson. Actually, I guess it could be interesting to have in Henderson and Shaden Sharp back course. That could have been kind of fun. I'll stick with four and see where the cards deal me. I don't think I'm going to trade this pick since we're going to go with the route of trading Dame and uh, Anthony. And as far as shot doctor is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and just hire one real quick. I don't love Chauncey Billups as a head coach in real life, but I'll just leave him the way he is right now. I I'll just keep him, I guess. Let's go to draft night, though. Big step to the process is draft night. So now it is time to unfortunately trade dame and anthony now coming up with realistic trades for both these guys not gonna be the easiest thing in the world it just won't be if unfortunately so i'm just gonna have to try my best here i'll get as much as i can in return uh but ultimately I just want to maximize value to where sharp is going to still be like the number one scorer so i'm not going to go too crazy realistic i just want to find a way to make sure that sharp is still the guy that's going to be like scoring the majority of the buckets here I actually jumped into the draft, but uh, the first player I want to try to throw it away is actually going to be Anthony Simons. And I have kind of the team I want to put him on. It's the Utah Jazz. They could use a point guard. They obviously have like Colin Sexton right now, but if they were to get like Anthony Simons, I'm sure they'd feel pretty good about that. So even if I'm just getting like draft picks for Simons, I would take it. Uh, so let's go to the Jazz because they're going to have cap space. So if I could just get like, uh, let's say it's 15 and maybe this future Minnesota pick and this future... I don't know, Cavs or Lakers pick, whatever it is. I don't care. I just want to get draft picks for Anthony. So let's say it's four first for Anthony Simons. They want to pick swap in that Knicks pick in this draft. I guess that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. We have to take on Simone. I don't really care about having him, but it's a pick swap in 2025. Sure, why not? We'll do that trade. And uh, now we have the Pistons on the clock. And I'm okay with actually being into the draft right now because I kind of want to pull off Damian Lord trade after oh brandon miller went number one okay detroit i don't know what we're doing but sure number two victor webb and Go yama goes to indiana and then scoot goes number three okay so number four who should we be taking here we got thompson we have jairus walker we have anthony black grand dickey cameron whitmore Derek whitehead i feel like uh i kind of want to take cameron whitmore here at four i don't know if i should be like i know there might be a consistent better consensus better player here but I feel like Cameron Whitmore develops the best out of all these guys. So I think I am going to go ahead and take Cameron Whitmore here at four. And then we're going to jump to 15 that we just got for the Anthony Simons trade. We have still have like Jet Howard on the board. Taylor Hendricks is still here. We have Derek Whitehead, Derek Lively. So a lot of good options here. Jalen Hood, Safino, Wallace. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the other Thompson twin though. Uh, Asa Thompson, even if he never becomes or Sar, I think this is going to be whichever one, obviously, you know, in 2k draft class, you have to spell their names wrong because 2k is weird, I guess, but I'm going to take him. Even if he never becomes anything for us, I'm just kind of happy to have him. And then we have pick 28. So I think we got another pick and I got like Nick Smith jr here who I'm going to take here as well. So that is going to be my draft. So we had three first round picks in this draft. So we had, uh, Cameron one more. We had Jairus Walker. We could have taken as well. And at number 15, we got Asar Thompson, and then at 28, we got Nick Smith Jr., or 26, I should say. So I felt pretty good about how that draft just went. We got three really good players who I think are going to help out immediately. Like I said, even if they aren't that, even if they never become like, you know, big players for us, we can always just trade them away. So that's just good assets. Watford, Keon Johnson, and Kevin Knox. I'm going to accept all of these. And then qualifying offers, we have Reddish and Matisse Thibel. I'm going to extend those. I'm not sweating on bringing either of them back, though, to be honest. So free agency, got Grant, Thibel, Eubanks and Reddish. I don't think I'll be resigning Jeremy Grant. In real life, he's going to want an absolute bag, and I think the Blazers are going to give it to him as long as they are keeping Dame. Uh, but uh, in this game, I do not want to give him that much money. We're probably stuck with Nurkic for at least this season, then we'll try to trade him maybe next year or at the trade deadline. But now it is time to trade Dame, and I have an idea in mind that I kind of like. I'm trying to trade Dame to the Golden State Warriors. Now, this trade is obviously super unrealistic. It is just, cra we're actually going crazy unrealistic here, to be honest with you. So it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, so I'm trying to trade Dame over to the Warriors. The main thing I want is Jonathan Kaminga. I think he'd be the perfect fit next to Shaden Sharp as like a secondary guy. 20 years old, and he develops like crazy. He'd be the perfect power forward replacement to Jeremy Grant. I have to take on Clay's contract because Dame's contract is so big, obviously. But Dame could return home, and we get Jonathan Kaminga. What do you say? They don't agree to it right away, which is kind of unfortunate. Do I have anything that would sweeten the deal? Maybe Keon Johnson. They don't agree still. You don't want Dame Jabari Walker. Okay, they agree. So just like that, we got Jonathan Kamega. And like I just said, that was one of the most unrealistic trades that I've done in quite some time. And I'm very aware of that. But don't take it too seriously. I really just wanted to make like Shaden Sharp the guy here. I know I have Klay Thompson now, but uh, I probably plan on maybe trading him here, just flipping him again. Maybe you could turn into like a three-team trade that teams often do where they don't complete the trade right away. So let's go ahead and try to flip Clay, I guess, to like a third team 
in this scenario i don't know if there's anybody that would offer me a good trade where i'm just like okay take clay and i'm fine with that jalen duran shingun jeremy sohan i gotta think of a team that would actually want clay's services though wizards yeah i don't want bradley beal obviously i might just hold on to clay until the trade deadline though we might just leave him here so i'm gonna probably have clay play with us until the trade deadline that's definitely gonna take some shots away from shade and sharp but we have Kamenga, we have Shaden Sharp, we have Cameron Whitmore. That's kind of my brand new big three. They're all not very good as of right now, but eventually they're going to be. So yeah, I feel pretty good. That Dame trade absolutely sucked. It was not realistic at all. I get that, but don't take it too seriously, like I said. So now, the only thing I need to do now is make sure the rest of the rotation is good. So Nick Smith is the starting point guard right now, which I'm actually okay with. You're going to have Shaden Sharp and Clay. I'm still going to start Shaden Sharp over Clay. Cameron Whitmore and Thompson, I'm okay with that. We have Kamenga and Nasir Little, I'm fine with that. Nurkic and Wofford. Honestly, it might just roll forward with how this is right now. I'm not going to resign either of the guys in free agency. If they come back in their qualifying offer, that's fine. I could sign some other players in free agency here, free agency here but I'm good. I'm good. We're just going to go straight to player progression. We got what we wanted to get done. We traded away Dame, traded away Simons in some of the most unrealistic trades imaginable, of course, but we got what we came here to accomplish. And now, Sharp and Kamenga are both developing like crazy. This is my future right here. Sharp and Kamenga. I feel pretty good about it. Thibel. And then I think that was Reddish back as well. No, it's just Matisse Thibel will come back on his qualifying offer. So, Clay's going down. Nurkic is going to be our starting center for now. I definitely want to change that down the line. Then Whitmore will be starting at that small forward spot. So, overall, we accomplished what we came out here to accomplish. And now we can go look out of rotation. So, hopefully, Clay is going to hit the bench. I'm going to trade him as soon as I can at the trade deadline. That way he's not here for too long. And I can get, hopefully get something good for him. And then the off season, we'll try to trade away Nurkic and get a new center. So we're going to be pretty bad, which is fine. They want to start Reggie Jackson on point guard. They want to start Clay and they want to start Thiable. Overall, entirely disagree. And that is because Chauncey's system, I think, is defensive oriented. So let's change that to uh, balanced, I guess. Or actually, or no, preferred system is. So we're going to change it to perimeter centric and see if that changes what our rotation would look like so it'll be nick smith it'll be clay whitmore kamenga nurkic uh the only thing i'm gonna fix here is of course i'm gonna have uh shane sharp start and we'll have him play 37 minutes so shane sharp officially unleashed here clay will come off the bench and we'll trade him at the deadline and now the only thing i need to do now is make sure shot tendencies i'm gonna boost down his clay which is uh, a little disrespectful but i'm gonna do it anyway i'm gonna boost shade and sharps all the way up to a 90 eight or something like that and a shot or his touch tendency i want this high as well and then kamenga just naturally develops in this game as you guys have seen in the past so i'll see you guys at the deadline where we are going to attempt to trade clay thompson away so we're stopped at the trade deadline as promised and i'm gonna be trying to trade away clay over to the dallas mavericks so essentially i'd be flipping dame or i would have been trading dame for kamenga hardaway bertans and then three first round picks which uh yeah, not the greatest value at all and not the most realistic value whatsoever. But let's see if the Mavericks would accept this. They lost Kyrie Irving, so they're going to need a new shooting guard. And Clay would be the perfect fit next to Luka because obviously he could play off Luka very well. So do they accept this? They do not. They wanted 2026 top three protected Red Jackson. Uh, you know what? That's fine because I plan on being good once we get to 2026. So I'll accept this. And just like that, we have officially dumped away Clay and now officially a lot of shots can go to our man shade and sharp although it was already going that way but now it'll definitely go that way so our starting core i love it kamenga whitmore sharp and nick smith pretty much have like a young starting five outside of nurkic already kind of assembled here so i feel really good about that thabble thompson watford this year a little i'm gonna roll with that for the rest of the season clay's officially gone and now it's time to just kind of keep simulating and see how we finish out i'm gonna take some minutes away from my bench a little bit though I do want to have Shaden Sharp play like 37 minutes if I can. Let's go like 38. I'll go something like this. We'll go like that. I will see you guys at the end of the season. Now that Clay is gone, we'll see how Shaden Sharp finishes as far as stats are concerned. Trey Young wins MVP. Rookie of the Year goes to Webb and Yama in Indiana. Six man goes to Jordan Poole. And then you're going to have defense player Anthony Davis. Uh, and then Garland most proof. So no most proof for Shaden Sharp. Obviously, we didn't make the playoffs. We're not ready for that moment just yet. But we take a look at the player stats. Shade Sharp did lead the way with 21. Nick Smith with 15 and a half. 13 from Whitmore. 13 from Kamenga. And then 12 from Hardaway. And then 10 and 9 from Nurkic with uh, not a block per game. So obviously the biggest thing this offseason is finding a way to get rid of Nurkic. That's what I want to do the most is dump him. So we're going to have New Orleans and uh, Oklahoma City. Atlanta and Oklahoma City. And you're going to have the Thunder going on to win a championship. Draft lottery time for the second year in a row. 
It is going to say it's probably going to be going to Chicago, but that is not the case at all. We're protected second overall pick. That pick is still largely protected even this year. So let's see if our pick lands number one. It is going to be the second overall pick. So we get the second overall pick. Although it says, Chicago, it says Chicago's pick, that is not the case. And then we have the 15th pick via the Dallas Mavericks from that Klay Thompson trade. So overall, pretty damn good. So we're going to have a second and a 15th overall pick to rebuild with to start this offseason. I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't want that number one overall pick. I totally forgot who had it, though. So uh, let me go check out who had number one because I accidentally clicked into the draft. So Orlando had it. They have so many bigs at it as it is. They can afford to trade down with me, man. I want Xavier Booker as my brand new center. That would be perfect. So they agree. And just like that, we're on the board. So we've traded up to number one. And we are going to be drafting Xavier Booker to make sure he is our brand new center for this team. So just like that. That is how I'm feeling. This team is about to be so good, man. We could have taken like Bradshaw or Amari, but I wanted to make sure we got Xavier Booker. We didn't need Matt. We already had a uh, good guard, so I wasn't really worried about that. So welcome to the team, Xavier Booker. Going to be our brand new center. Sharp, Kamenga, Wofford all back. Of course, I'm going to decline Davis Bertans. And qualifying offers, Lawson and Simone are free agents. I'm not too concerned about them, obviously. But be moving Xavier Booker to that center spot. He will be our brand new center for this Blazers team. We have such a young starting five, and it's honestly kind of exciting. I really like it. Nurkic and Hardaway. I need to find a way to dump Nurkic. So we're going to have Nick Smith, Shaden Sharp, Cameron Whitmore, Hardaway, Thompson. So we're going to find a way to dump Hardaway if we can. And then Kamega, Little, I'm okay with that. And we're going to have Nurkic, Booker, and Wofford. So I do want to actually, let's do this. We're going to move Wofford to the four because he's more of a power four than he should be a center, to be honest. And I'm going to move Nasir Little to small forward and i'm gonna move thompson actually no i'm gonna move i'm gonna keep a little at the power forward i guess so next thing is to trade nurkic we got to find a way to move nurkic and then i'm gonna try to move hardaway if i can but we'll see what is available to us so i'm gonna be moving nurkic over to toronto for Plumley and christian coloco obviously not a great return by any means but nurkic's trade value probably wouldn't be that high to begin with so getting Plumley back actually kind of ironic because uh when portland entered or when he was traded to portland uh, when Nurkic was traded to Portland, if I can say that correctly, Plumlee was part of the trade. So uh, kind of funny, full circle. But next is Tim Hardaway. If I can find a way to dump Tim Hardaway last year of his deal, that'd be great. Philadelphia wants to give me Jaden Bradley in a first. I'm okay with that. Wineland in a first. That's pretty good as well. Robinson. So those first two trades, I really loved actually, which is probably we'll be looking at TJ Warren, Oklahoma City. I guess they wanted like a veteran shooter, but I'm going to go with this Bucks one. I'm going to go with this Bucks trade. They get ourselves another shooter with Giannis. And now we've officially gone kind of full young. So now we're going to have Nick Smith, Sam, Simon Wilder, I should say, Shaden Sharp at the two, Whitmore, Thompson, Kamenga, Wofford, Nasir Little, and then Booker, Plumlee, and Chris Coloco. So Plumlee's kind of our veteran in the room because you definitely need some veterans on young rosters. And we should have some cast space. So I'm kind of curious what point guards would be available to us to add to the roster that wouldn't take away from Shaden Sharp. So we have like Drew Holiday. We have Chris Paul. We have Markel Fultz. We have Cole Anthony. Tyus Jones. Mike Conley. Talon Horn Tucker. Lonzo Ball is kind of interesting. But I literally had him in yesterday's video. So I'm not going to do that. Fultz. I actually kind of like the idea of. It'd be an A minus per defense. B plus, B, and then you have like Chris Paul. Chris Paul. It could make some sense. But at the same time. Like it'd be kind of weird to add him at this point. Uh, you know, him signing in Portland would just be so damn random. And honestly, it'd be kind of funny if he did. We have like Trey Jones as well down here. Tyus Jones is also fun. Do I want to sign Chris Paul to a one-year deal? Have him retire in Portland? Literally makes no... I mean, this video doesn't make a ton of sense in general. So like I could. Uh, and he'd be like the perfect point guard to mentor Shaden Sharp a little bit. I mean, we already had Dame mentor him though. So do we want to do that? I don't know. It's kind of a quirky, fun idea. But... Uh, I mean, because we kind of have a full rotation. The only thing is like that point guard spot. And I don't know if I can rely on Nick Smith to like develop like crazy. Drew Holiday could be fun. I'm going to go ahead and screw it. I'm going to sign Chris Paul to a one-year deal to mentor this Portland squad for one year. Let's give him a chance. He's going to get one last payday. Chris Paul will be our point guard. And that will be our offseason. So ultimately, a little bizarre. But the main thing is, is Chris Paul isn't going to have to score whatsoever. So he's just going to be distributing the rock. And he's going to have so many of these young guys who can score around him that he might be able to, you know, put this team on the map to go win a championship potentially. I don't know if he will, but we're just, you know, using our money while we can before we have to pay like Sharp and then Kamenga. So Sharp is up to an 85. Chris Paul is down, which is kind of 
You know, kind of assume that. Whitmore is up. Nick Smith is developing. So he went up four overall, which is actually really promising to see. So maybe we didn't need to sign Chris Paul and Nick Smith will be just fine at that point guard spot. But whatever. We already did it. So no big deal. So I'm going to simulate the end of next season. Hopefully with Chris Paul being here, we can maybe make the playoffs this next year. So at the end of the season, Xavier Booker does win rookie of the year with 17 and eight. Sabonis is your six man defense player back in Indiana, which is kind of funny. Uh, defense player goes at Mobley. Shaden Sharp wins most approved, averaging 27 points per game. So he is definitely fully unleashed, fully unlocked. Quinn Snyder is your coach of the year. I'm assuming still coaching Atlanta. So let's go ahead and see how this went for us. So we actually ended up making the play in so if we can get into the playoffs i think that's going to be like huge playoff experience so even if chris paul was kind of a weird signing i think he did his job here average 9 and 11 and he got this young team into the playoffs which uh we can kind of go for without him and then nick smith average 18 so maybe he's ready to take on that point guard role next year so i don't regret signing chris paul whatsoever because if we can get this valuable playoff experience we'll be ready and in shape next year to maybe be a contender low key so can we get out of the plan is the question. We do win against Utah, but now we get the Lakers. So I don't know if they still have LeBron. They do. Jalen Hood, Safino, quickly LeBron, AD, Vanderbilt. So this is going to be a tough one, but I would love nothing more than to get this valuable playoff experience here. So hopefully we can get it here. So we are up on the Lakers right now, and it's looking good so far. If we can get in there, man, it's going to be so valuable to our playoff experience or to our young squad getting this experience. So 37 31, 15, 14, then 10 and 14 from Chris Paul. So overall, huge W. We find our way in the playoffs, and this is what we're looking like as of right now. So Chris Paul with that veteran presence with Mason Plumlee as well around all these young guys that we have. Honestly, it's kind of like the perfect fit. Let's see if we can find a way. Can we upset Sacramento? Like low-key, could we? Like the team on paper is not that terrifying. I think there's a chance we could upset Sacramento. I have nothing to lose here. So I'm just going to click similar current round. And we win game one, but we do lose in five, which is fine. I think with development, Chris Paul is going to obviously leave probably. But uh, hey, he got this Blazers in the playoffs. He can retire on a note of making the playoffs, I guess. I don't know. Does he retire? And he does. So I'm not going to uh, override that. Chris Paul retires the Blazer, which uh, is never going to happen in real life, I would imagine. So draft lottery time. This time, our pick is going to go to Chicago. So we aren't going to have a first round pick this year. So I'm going to go ahead and send that pick over to Chicago because that pick will finally convey. And uh, I don't think we have any pick, any other picks from any other trades. So we're ready to just roll forward with what we got. I don't really think I'll be doing anything too crazy this offseason. The main thing is resetting both Sharp and Kamenga and uh, just kind of having those two guys just lead us the way we want to go. So as far as head coach is concerned, I know uh, he just got into the play or Chauncey just got into the playoffs. But if I can get a different head coach, I'm not opposed to it because I don't like Chauncey as a head coach in real life. So... If I can get a different head coach, why not? Willie Green obviously has done some good things in New Orleans, but uh, maybe we can get him. Let's see if there's any uh, anybody else that makes sense. Tom Thibodeau, not really what I'm looking for. Chris Finch, no thank you. Bigger staff, Nick Nurse also would be fun. So let's see if we can get any of these guys. Uh, we can get Willie Green. I guess I'll go with that. Willie Green will be our head coach, and then we'll go Darty to be our burn defensive coach. And then assistant, we're going to need one, I guess. So I'll fill this out. And then the main thing, like I said, is just re-signing uh, everyone else. So let's go to uh, draft night where I need to send my pick to Chicago real quick. That way that is taken care of. And then I'll re-sign everyone else. The team and player option got Shaden Sharp. So we don't have to pay him just yet, which is actually kind of huge. I know uh, Kaminga is a free agent, though, I believe. So Whitmore, Nick Smith, Thompson, we're bringing them all back. Qualifying offers, we got Kaminga, Wilder, or yeah, Wilder, and then Coloco. So I want to bring all those guys back if I can. And then free agency. Giannis is a free agent. Do we have money for Giannis, bro? Low key, that would be kind of crazy, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sign Giannis. That would be just the ultimate cheat code. I'm going to roll with Kamenga. I'm going to roll with Kamenga. Let's just do it. Although this video has been weird already, so it's not like signing Giannis would like ruin the video because I've already done some weird things, but I'm going to stick with what I've grown. Do I, do I want to do it? Though? I low key kind of want to sign Giannis. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to sign Kamenga to uh, his deal, bring him back, and then Watford I'll bring back probably. Uh, although we probably don't need him because we have Nasir Little, and then we still have money and free agency to sign someone else we want to. Do I want to roll forward Nick Smith, though, is the question. So we're going to have Nick Smith, Shaden Sharp, uh, Whitmore Thompson, Kamenga, Nasir Little, and then Booker and Plumley. So do I want to sign another guard? I have the ability to sign like a Jalen Brunson if I wanted to. I could sign 
uh Lon Lonzo, which I'm not gonna do like I mentioned earlier. I could get like a Davion Mitchell, which actually he'd be kind of perfect as well because he doesn't score a whole lot and just plays defense. And I could just keep Nick Smith as like a bench point guard. So you know what? I'm gonna give Davion Mitchell a deal. Let's take advantage of this cast base that we have right now. And let's let's sign Davion Mitchell. Why not? There's really no reason not to. So the only other thing I'm gonna do is make sure we get Christian Coloco back because uh there's a chance, or we can get like a Chua. We could use our money even more. I'm gonna give a Chua a deal. Why not? We have money. Let's use it. So that'll be it. And I think that's gonna be our offseason. So it's gonna be Mitchell, Nick Smith, Shaden Sharp, Whitmore Thompson, Kamenga Little, Booker, Achua. Let's go to player progression. Let's see how much this goes up. We should be at least 385s and above. Yeah, 88, 87, 86. That's four, actually. So Mitchell. Shaden Sharp, Kamenga, Booker, Whitmore, Nick Smith even jumped up like crazy. So, yeah, we're in a really good spot. There is a good chance we're legitimately contenders next year and maybe a top three seed in the West. No, there is a chance that is the case. So, looking at this rotation, let's see where we're at. Power ranking lines is number eight. We're going to run a nine-man rotation, not 10. We're going to go nine. Be Mitchell, Sharp, Whitmore, Kamenga, Booker, Nick Smith, Achua, Thompson, and this area little. Proficiency, four-star, Prenner centric uh three and a half or say four star balance so i guess i'll run a balance system and we're gonna see if this team can go make the playoffs and potentially maybe go win a championship this year definitely possible so at the end of the season we ended up finishing up as a second seed in the west and here we are stats for this year so we had 24 from shaden sharp 22 from xavier booker 19 for kamenga 17 from nick smith and 13 from whitmore 12 from Davion Mitchell and 12 and 8. So he honestly kind of filled exactly what we wanted out of Chris Paul. But of course, he's a lot younger. So it was kind of the perfect signing, in my opinion. Achua a little and then Thompson played some minutes off the bench. Uh, but I'm hoping this team can just win a championship this year. We just beat the Lakers in the play-in last year. That doesn't mean we're going to beat them in the playoffs. They did lose Anthony da or LeBron, but they got Davion Donovan Mitchell. So hopefully we have the better Mitchell, I guess. I mean, I like my roster. Even if we don't win this year. This team has ton, like plenty of time to grow together, so it's like not even the biggest deal in the world if we don't get it done this year. So I'm just going to sell my current round against LA because, like I said, not a whole lot of pressure here, but we beat them in four. So overall, I'll take care of the Lakers. Now we get Dallas. They did not keep Klay Thompson, but they do have Jaden Hardy, Middleton, Vucevic, Melton, and then honestly, outside of Luka, I'm not very terrified of this roster. I think Vucevic and Middleton are kind of mid in 2K, so like I'm not sweating by any means. In a similar current round again and even with luca it does not matter and now we get the sacramento kings the kings actually beat us last year in the first round so let's see if we can return the favor and beat them this year they have DeRozan off the bench Jalen Duran, and dj wagner so game one we're up 1-0 131 to 108 shade and sharp with 41 averaging 28 in the playoffs right now it is a safe to say we have unlocked shade and sharp Two to one, they get one on us. We went three to one and we beat them in five. Let's go in the finals. Come on, baby. We get Cleveland. And obviously, as we know, Cleveland is tough, but they took they lost Donovan Mitchell. They did get Franz Wagner, though. So that is something we need to know. That is definitely something we need to know. But they don't have Donovan Mitchell. That should play a huge fit. That should be in our favor, like 100%. So let's see what happens. Game one, they do win, of course. We even it up. We go up two to one. Yes, we can. Very close game so far, by the way. I think they've all been like two point, three point wins. Three to one, seven point win. We beat them in six. Yes, we can. Let's go, baby. Shaden Sharp, Xavier Booker got the finals MVP, but Shaden Sharp has been fully unlocked, and we went out there and won a championship before we even had to extend him off his rookie contract. Obviously, this video was like super unrealistic. Like it just wasn't very realistic at all. Especially that Dame trade that I did earlier, the Simons trade. But it was kind of a fun video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, this week is just kind of a filler week because once we get into the offseason re rebuilds next week, that is when I'll be back to my usual self being as realistic as I possibly can. So I hope you guys enjoyed the mix up a little bit or the, I guess, different kind of video today. But hope you guys enjoyed the Scrushables. I'll see you all on the next one. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.